Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another episode of Achieving Perfection. This is going to be for the Avicen the Purifier node in the PvE Legacy Coalition event, Avicen's Madness. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to show off the decks that I would suggest. I'm going to go over the decks themselves. I'm going to get into the node, and then I'm going to get into deck building. So what would happen if you could not build one of the decks that I am recommending? So without further ado, for newer players, I would use Jace Unraveler of Secrets with something like this right here. And then for players with more substantial collections, I would go ahead and use this deck right here. Now, spoiler alert, this deck here, the second sun deck, I'm actually going to be using for like half of the nodes in this event. So you're going to be seeing this particular deck popping up a lot. It's kind of actually like my go-to PvE deck for PvE deck, PvE deck for a lot of objectives. So that is the second one. All right, the event. So for 5.3, we are going up against Avacyn. And Avacyn has 432 health, has very solid mana gains, and our objectives are to win the fight and then you get to pick between one of these two, really, right? Or, I mean, you're ideally going to get one of the two. One of them is shield, so win the fight with 90 or more health remaining, or win the fight with 20 or less health remaining. My suggestion is to go for shield, and the best way to do that is to get level 60 planeswalkers and use a bunch of effects that give you life. So life gain cards that are consistent and give you substantial life, or lifelink creatures. Now, the deck itself is not overly intimidating, but there are a few really nasty baddies in it. So you'll see that this deck has Angel of Deliverance, Avacyn, Relentless Dead, and Wolf of Devil's Breach. In the event that you were wondering what those cards are, I actually have all of them. So, Deliverance. This is Burt Reynolds' favorite angel, and it requires Delirium to destroy your creatures. So this is basically never going to trigger. I meant to tap Delirium. I fail at this like every time with my fat fingers. Okay. Perform the associated ability if there are five or less gems of the card's color. So every time this deals combat damage, if there are five or fewer white gems, this happens. That basically means that this never happens. You see that I have the card mastered. I think I've had this ability trigger once. So don't worry about it. Archangel Avacyn. This is a nasty card right? This, this one's actually worth being scared of a little bit, you know? So Archangel Avacyn is 18 for an 8-8. Eight, eight. When it enters the battlefield, all of your opponent's creatures are going to get prevent damage and reach until the beginning of its next turn. So that means that they're going to get a free turn to block your stuff and kill it without taking damage. And then whenever a non-angel creature Avacyn controls dies, it flips, it becomes a base 10-10, and then when it transforms, you're, so you and each of your creatures are going to take 6 damage. So just beware, if you're killing things that are not Avacyn, that Avacyn's going to flip into an even nastier angel. Then we've got Relentless Dead. These things are a pain just because they are indeed relentless. They just don't go away. So if your opponent gets the Relentless Dead out, you really are just going to want to go ahead and exile them. Don't, don't kill them exile them, or alternatively, you bounce them, right? So if they're bounced, they don't immediately come back, and no big deal. And finally, this one is the one that I found to be the biggest pain in the butt, just because it wipes out, wipes out, it wipes out my, uh, my critters, and it deals damage every turn, so I don't like that, and it's this Wolf of Devil's Breach. So it's a 5-5, five, five, and then whenever it attacks, your opponent's going to discard a card and deal 5 damage to you, and all of your creatures. So especially for newer players, this card is nasty. For players who have like everything, this isn't super scary. But when this card came out, it was really difficult to deal with. It was like a board wipe every turn and it hit you like a Mack truck. So this goes perfectly into what are the decks that I would suggest and why. Uh, I know Behold the Beyond, Bring to Light, Descend Upon the Stinful, that's all stuff that's just going to draw them cards, give them more cards, kill things all that kind of jazz. Harness the Storm isn't too big of a deal. Fevered Visions is going to make you guys both draw more cards and ping for damage. So 
Jace. Jace is a little bit of an odd choice in that blue has never tra been like the traditional gain life color. But the thing about this fight is that you're going up against a planeswalker, planeswalker, well, I guess a creature, right? That has 432 health. And that's a substantial amount of health. And so if you want to be able to kill Avacyn, you want to be able to do so fairly effectively. And I feel like there's really no more effective way for a new player than unravel. This unravel ability makes it so that when you draw a card, each of your creatures gain plus four, plus four. So every turn, your creature should be getting plus four, plus four. And if Avacyn gets Fevered Visions out to make you draw an extra card, then you're getting plus eight, plus eight per turn. Now, this would be all fine and dandy, but if you didn't have anything to gain life, this would mean nothing. And that's where two creatures in particular come into play. Those being Contraband Kingpin and... Tomebound Lich. Now, there are better options with Lifelink, so things like Worm Coil Engine, but those are masterpieces. I want to say that there's also a Mythic, um, and then as future sets come out, it seems that they're giving us more access to Lifelink outside of blue that can be used in blue, which is really nice. But you definitely want to make sure that you're using something with Lifelink. Now, this is important because these creatures are going to be getting buffed up the wazoo. And as they get buffed up the wazoo, they're going to be gaining you a ton of life. Now, Tomebound Lich has the added bonus of Death Touch, which means that as your opponent's critters block it, they die. So if Avacyn blocks it, Avacyn dies, and that's fantastic. Hydroid Crassus is going to draw you cards and gain you life. Sorry, the cough. Ugh. And uh, yeah, so pretty self-explanatory. This, this card, when it draws you six cards, can give you plus 72 power in one turn between three creatures with your third ability down. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do after, if you have these creatures, right, or you have other creatures that can gain you life or have life link, life link is really key for this, is go through what you have that converts to blue. Now, there are a ton of options here. Dragon's Horde, hopefully you have. This is an event reward. It's going to convert to your Planeswalker colors. And then really just the other ones that you have. So I'm running four here. If you have Storm the Vault, that's an obvious addition. Mystic Sanctuary is going to get you your removal back. Castle Vantress is going to draw you more cards, which is going to buff your creatures more. And Memorial to Genius is also going to get popped and draw you more cards, buffing your creatures. So all of these supports have more rolls than just converting to blue, but if you can just convert to blue, that's fine. If you look at the removal that I've got, I've got a bunch of bounce, and all of these bounce cards can draw cards. So bounce, draw a card, bounce, draw a card, and bounce, draw a card. So you're definitely going to want to go ahead and use as much removal as possible in conjunction with all of the life gain and the gem conversion. And if you do this, you'll find that you have a really easy time not only beating this node, but achieving that shield objective. Because even if you do like well in excess of Avacyn's health and gain it back, um, or even if you gain back well in excess of your own health, I should say, and then Avacyn pings you down below 90 before the end of the fight, it'll actually take that health that you've gained in excess of your max health total and add it to your health total at the end of the battle. So that'll help you with that 90 or more health. Now, the deck that I'm going to use is a Karn Second Sun deck. I wound up swapping out creatures that have removal effects for five color creatures. So that's why Niv Mizet Reborn and Sphinx of the Guild Pact are in here. It's just so that when I use Karn's first ability, this Thran Legacy, I get that boost to all of my mana bonuses. So if I pick one of those two, it gives all of my mana bonuses a permanent plus two boost, which is absolutely phenomenal i love that now the other pieces of the deck are largely simple it's an omniscience deck at its core so we're fishing for omniscience and then once we get omniscience we want to make sure that we get pyromancer's goggles down as pyromancer's goggles is going to let us fetch into our combo which is hazard's undying fury and approach of the second sun these are the only two spells in the deck once you get off one Hazard's Undying Fury, all of your Pyromancer's Goggles are going to fetch more Hazard's Undying Furies because the Hazard's Undying Fury cast is going to take all four Approach of the Second Suns 
out of your deck. And since this game just generates a new deck for you, you're just going to keep getting more approach of the second sons. Now you'll see that I am running Alhammeret's Archive and Sanguine Bond. You do not need to run those two, but I run them because this doubles the life that you gain. And this makes it so that whenever you gain life, your opponent loses life equal to that amount, and this support loses one shield. I can easily do a thousand damage in a turn, gain a thousand life, with the combination of Hazards and Dying Fury and Approach of the Second Sun. As Avacyn has 432 health, that means that I end at max health, and Avacyn ends at dead. Very, very, very dead. No Mercy is exactly what I have for Avacyn and every other opponent that I face. This is going to kill her creatures. Now, you'll see that I'm going to be swapping between No Mercy and Settle the Wreckage throughout this event, and that's just if I have an objective where I need to not kill my opponent's creatures, Exile does not count as killing them, so I use Settle the Wreckage for that. Otherwise, I prefer No Mercy because it stays out turn to turn and it kills things very, very effectively and does not convert gems. So, fantastic card. Now, if you can't build either of the decks that I suggested, what you're going to want to do is go to your cards and really for this node, you just want to look up lifelink. So what are the things that you have with lifelink? And then once you look at what you have with lifelink, pick out some serious baddies that have lifelink and then pair them with a planeswalker that is going to buff them up. Okay, so once you buff those baddies with lifelink up, make sure that you have ample gem conversion and a ton of removal. And if you can do that, you will win and be fine. To give you an idea on my A New Start account, I'm planning on trying to tackle this node. Unfortunately, I don't have Kiora yet. I was really hoping to have Kiora for this, but I'm going to be using a Gideon 1 deck. Where'd you go, Gideon? I'm going to be using a Gideon 1 deck, and then I'm going to be using Gideon's abilities to buff my creatures. You'll see that this particular Gideon is too low of a level to be awesome. He is very much not awesome, but with my A new start Gideon, he's a little bit better. So I'm going to be making the creatures into big boys, and then once I make them into big boys, I'm going to be using things like Cast Out or the Celestia Enclave? Something? Conclave? Hmm... I feel silly for forgetting this. Wrong set? Maybe. It's a support. It's an uncommon. It's got Convoke. I should just look Convoke, shouldn't I? That'll make my life a heck of a lot easier. Oh, I was looking War of the Spark. Duh. It's over here. Conclave Tribunal, right? So just use things that will give you removal and life gain. And honestly, you'll be fine. So... If your collection's more limited, you might lose a few games. If you can, make sure that you're including some effects with Exile so that you can get rid of Relentless Dead. Otherwise, you will not be able to get rid of Relentless Dead. Uh, other than that, pretty self-explanatory. So I hope this helps you out. I hope you're able to achieve perfection, and I'll see you in the next one.